I bought a broken PS5. It was $394 delivered or 262 freedom bucks. It was listed as faulty, doesn't display a picture and fan may not work. It's in decent condition with only a few scratches and minor dings. But the HDMI port has clearly been mistreated. Let's try turning it on. No picture, but the fan does actually work. The Blu-ray drive works too. Will there be a bonus SSD installed? This video is sponsored by the awesome team at PCBWay. We all know they've got bargain prices, but why should you choose PCBWay to make your parts? Because they use higher quality manufacturing techniques and materials than their competitors, including using Tayo ink for their solder mask. They have fast turnaround, real-time quotes, and order progress tracking, 24-hour customer support, and technical support which can help you correct mistakes in your design. They also have a great open source community with thousands of projects and competitions where you can win cool prizes. So check the link in the description and get started today. PCB way, prototype the easy way. It's not too dusty. I want to retain the warranty void sticker, so I'll use some heat and alcohol to pry it up. I'm using a T8 security driver. Now for the screws holding down the motherboard. All 42 of them in slow motion for your viewing pleasure. The top shield was so stubborn I kept thinking I'd missed a screw. Looking at the thermal putty it even looks like glue. There appears to be a dry spot on the APU, a common trend with PS5s that are used vertically. The heatsink is really clean, but what Aussie PlayStation would be complete without at least one spider? But 8 legs doesn't concern me, it's this 19 legged beast that does. The internals have burst through the back of the metal chassis. There's a tiny capacitor that's almost been gobbled up by the port. I'm hoping it's not damaged, and that no pads are torn. It looks like a few pins have ripped off the board. I'll add some low melt solder to the mounting pins to make removal easier.
then lift it up carefully, hoping I don't knock off that capacitor. And luckily we have no torn pads, only the port leaving one of its broken legs behind. Now I just need to clean it up for the new port. This is going to be so tricky to solder the port with this capacitor in the way, so I'll just remove it and put it back afterwards. Although I soon realised that this tip was not big enough to melt the solder, even on these small pins. I need to wick up some of this solder I've blobbed on here. Even with my largest iron tip at a temp of 430 degrees, I was struggling to remove this solder bridge between the ground pad and the 5 volt. Oh my god, I'm never going to remove this solder bridge. It won't budge. That's it, I can't do it. I failed. So I removed the solder bridge and checked the pins to make sure they were all solid. I then need to reinstall the tiny capacitor, which was a lot harder than I thought as it was such a tight space. Now I can solder the port's mounting legs and put it back together enough to test it. Before that, I want to fix up the liquid metal. Using a syringe, I can suck up the liquid metal around the edges. I'll just remove this hair, which I swear wasn't grey before it touched the liquid metal. I'll spread it around evenly and then do the same on the APU side. I'll give the console a quick clean too. Okay, let's try it. Ah, uh, 
are no good. I checked all the pins again and nothing was shorted or loose. It's possible that the HDMI encoder has gone bad, but I wanted to resolder everything first, but while doing so, the capacitor broke. I was thinking maybe it already had a crack in it, and that's why my first repair attempt didn't work. I have heard people say that it isn't necessary, but then I've had others claiming it doesn't work without it. It's a 100 nanofarad capacitor, size 1005, but unfortunately 0402 is the smallest size I had to replace it with. In order to fit it, I had to enlarge the pad on the 5 volt trace. It was still too big to solder successfully. I ended up taking an 0201 size cap off a PS4 donor board and managed to get it on there. Alright, let's test it. Yes, it works. And the crowd goes wild. I'll give it a little wiggle to confirm that there's no loose pins. I think I need to get better with my hot air station and maybe even get a better quality one because these jobs are definitely much easier with hot air soldering. Anyway, this PS5 is fixed. Thanks for watching.